How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Pokemon Horizons episode review. Today's episode, mm, excuse me, it's episode 21, entitled The Mebrim That's All Alone. Mebrim is the Japanese name for Hat Hatena. Hatena eventually becoming Hatterene, one of my favorite Pokemon from that generation from Galar. Before I go any further, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell that is right there so you can become notified of more videos just like this one. Of course, when I point, I always assume that you're watching it in small view and the little button's right there. I digress. Obviously, this video, video, this episode is about Liko getting her second Pokemon, which is Hatena. And Hatena are these psychic type Pokemon, blue base form cutie pies, kind of looks like a clown. It has an appendage that looks like a, a hat. And <clears throat> it senses feelings. Um, it's more or less the Galar version of, I guess, Ralts to Gardevoir in a way. So Gardevoir makes black holes if it senses that his trainer is in danger. Uh, Hatterene, I don't think, does that. But I digress. So, without trying to go, you know, give you beat by beat, I'll give you the major parts. So, we, we are introduced to this Hatter Hatena when it's... In a, it's a storm going on, and it's surrounded by friendly Pokemon. Like, there's Rookies, there's Drillbers, and they're kind of showing a concern, but then it runs off. And I guess it's because it is so sensitive to emotions. This type of Pokemon tries to stay away from people. Because when it comes to extreme emotions, like people fighting, which is going to get kind of annoying. Um, we do get some feisty moments with or Orla, or Oreo, however you want to say her name. Which is, it's both. One is English, one is Japanese. But th that might get annoying. You know, Hatterene always going, oh, and them having to go, no, we're friends. We're, we're as tight as, uh, hold on. Well, the Japanese name of this, po of, uh, Puki, pu 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 I'm just going to go ahead and just try to look it up. Don't, don't, don't be mad at me, guys. I'm, I've never tried to say this name before. I think it's Puki. You, you, it, it's the Gen 8? No, that one's from Aloha. Alola. It's from Gen 7 Pokemon. Looks like a sea cucumber. It spits its guts out, and its guts can make a fist, right? Very, very funny. Um, Don't worry. This is, this is, don't worry. This is worth it. Nama Koboshi. So they keep saying that they're as tight as two Nakaboshi in a pond. Puku Muku. There we go. Glad I said that correctly, finally. And it's such a weird saying because those Pokemon usually, they find an area and they stay in it. I'm thinking if you had said two Magikarp in a pond, right? Or uh, a Remoraid in a, in a, in a Mantine in a pond, right? Very weird. But I guess that's, you know, that's the thing they do when they shake all the hands. That's going to be annoying if every time they have a disagreement or a slight argument, Hatterene goes, mm. just look, you're cute, you're adorable, stop it. It especially had those moments. First, we had Orla and Murdoch because they started arguing. Mur she wants to do maintenance. Murdoch as well, you know, if you could get the ship working correctly. She's like, that wasn't my fault. Yeah, yeah, they, they go back and forth with a little thing. They didn't notice it was there. It just kind of runs off. Skitter, 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 skitter. Um, Noctowl is, is the MVP because it cooing loudly let Liko know where it was. It was on the observation deck. By digress. Uh, the other fight, fight Orla had was with Molly where Orla admits to Liko. She goes, you know, when you first got here, I thought you were just, you know, overly polite and... Trying not to make anybody upset with you, but I can see you. You just considerate, and you know, being considerate, it's 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 nice. And her, and, uh, her and Molly kind of go at it because she's like, oh, you know, someone's blah 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 blah. It was it was a funny moment, not you know, funny enough for me to remember every, every little detail. But then you get the hat and wrinkle, oh, it's, or a head tenor going, oh, shut up, shut up, don't do that all the time, okay? You know, people will have disagreements, can still be friends. As long as the disagreements on on something that is not very morally dubious. I digress. They end up finding her 
because all her ten are female, end up finding her because Sprigatito, when when they're about to go to the Galar mine, they have to go into this mountain shack, and they have these random mountain shacks, you know, just for people to take shelter, just in case. It's open to everyone. Uh, is what Free tells them, and Sprigatito finds it in the box. Now, um, Liko thought something was wrong with it. Pokemon never used his real voice until she was about to capture it. Capture it. These guys are doing Ash level captures. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. You guys are new trainers. This is the second Pokemon where you know Freed Murdoch gave. I think Murdoch gave. Um, Roy the ball. I thought he gave Roy the ball, but <sighs> Freed gives her the Pokeball. And, you know, here, get on in. Eventually, y'all gonna battle a Pokemon to earn his trust, right? Eventually, there's gonna be a Pokemon that's like, oh yeah, I like you. Let's throw hands and see if you're, you know, cool enough to be my trainer. And speaking of trainers, what is on Liko's mind is what Kabu had said. And actually, it even stems to class, her class, Annie, because she does remote learning. And she finds that Anne has a new Pokemon, has a Sandshrew. And the Sandshrew and Oshawa get along. Of course, Liko goes, oh, I'm just going to focus on this Pokemon. You're a Pokemon trainer. Get more than one. You're not a person who has a Pokemon pet. You're a trainer. Get another Pokemon. But she's wondering what type of trainer she's going to be. You know, Anne and Roy both seem like they want to be battle trainers. They want to get stronger. And Roy and Freed both have to go, yeah, there's tons. You could be anything. You could do anything, right? There are people who discover new Pokemon. There are people who uh, battle Pokemon. What else did? There's three of them. There's always the rule of three. If I can remember what Freed said. Well, she didn't make it into my notes. I'm just, I'm just trying to speak freely about some of the things that happened in this episode, right? Nope. No, no, nope stronger there are people who want to be stronger people who want to collect pokemon and people who want to discover new pokemon i do find it interesting that i guess there are people who are like reptile collectors right i mean would a cat lady be considered a cat collector that's a, that's an interesting thought there but this whole entire episode is just Liko trying to make sure that this hatterene doesn't have a broke when molly examines it, it doesn't have a status condition it's not wounded it has kind of a issue of the heart it's so damn timid that, you know, it's in a scary place. And Lika was able to identify with it because when she first arrived on the ship, it was storming and she lost Brigatito. She felt lonely. And it's just interesting that they were able to connect that way. It sleeps in her little hoodie, which is very reminiscent of uh, Ash's Rowlet, which, man, y'all didn't let that Pokemon evolve because, you you know, Rowlet's cute. But come on, the CGI is amazing. Can't believe you did that. Anyway, sleeps in in the hoodie right there. Uh, what there's really the only other important parts is Dot helps. You know, Liko because they were all wet. Everyone has their clothes drying in the engine room. So you got Macargo, Caracol. You know, drying them up with their heat, and she brings Dot her needle thing costume and she's asking what can i do to help this thing out you know this little guy and dot kind of does her own way of identifying saying you know when i do my needle thing thing and i'm reading the comments there's some people that just make me want to go shut up and even get a uh, head tentacle when she's showing her emotion but she goes yeah there's other people who put good comments and it reminds me you know why i do this and it's very nice very all of I, I say this all the time. All the Pokemon interactions are cute. Like when Roy makes a trap to try to get it to eat and capture it for a Coco falls for it. All the other Pokemon that don't have trainers, they see it. Al Cream tries to walk them in. It runs away because it's a little scary punk. Palmy's actually very shy too, because Palmy goes, eh. Look, Liko's probably gonna get that Palmy. Because Roy always had, already has Kaiden, right? She's probably going to get the Palmy, which, okay, I get it. Which, again, would make more sense if some of you guys get some of these Pokemon that's on the ship. That are just kind of just here. Maybe not. Who knows? I digress. 
she finds a way of identifying with Pokemon. And it's hilarious how oblivious she is to her own emotions. Because Roy says, oh, you're finally cheered up. When it came to the whole, after she connected with this Hatena. And she's like, oh, was I, I was? You're so oblivious. Even Dash is like, can't believe you're that oblivious. And I guess her charm is that she can identify a Pokemon and get them to open up. Even Roy says that that's the thing you're really good at. So she wants to, does she say she wants to under, I think she says she wants to understand Pokemon more. I think that is, that is her big deal. Uh, nope. She wants to understand how Pokemon feel. Sounds like a Pokemon professor, if you ask me. Just, just my opinion. It sounds like a, a, bona fide pokemon not pokemon master uh pokemon professor it sounds like a a field of study for them how do pokemon feel now yeah, that's just in my opinion um quacks it was cute little pokemon plus yeah the pokemon does blush it had ten of blush when she picked it up it finally squeaked in its own little voice so there you goes Pretty much, pretty sure that's how she's going to meet all her Pokemon. You guys need to battle some of these guys now, all right? Especially you, Roy. Look, Roy. This is this is for Paldea, right? So eventually you guys got to go back to Paldea. But, but, Roy, if you're going to catch a Galar Pokemon, Shobi doesn't catch Surface, we already saw that one. If you're going to catch a Galar Pokemon, bro, Brosif, buddy, I can see him with the Lucario, too. Battle the Pokemon for me. Do it for me. And then capture it, please. Uh, one of the last things that are ending off here, we do see Amatheo, Q, Cubic Zucornia, I can't remember. One of them is Zornia, I can't remember the first one's name. Uh, oh no, Zur and then Cornia. Those three are here. Uh, Zur, Zor and Cornia want to go at Amatheo into the Gala Mine because they also have somehow tracked Ray, Black Rayquaza going in there. When they're going in at the same time as Liko, Roy, and Freed. Of course they are. So they're going to have to battle them again. Although it looks like um, Charizard is going to put in that work on Luge. Is there any... I don't think there's any other really important things here. Um, I just like that Oreo is feisty. I love it. I love that that is her personality. Welder. I love it. It's great. There's really... Not a ton of meat on the bones here. Like, it's all character development. And by character development, it's again, Liko discovering who she is. She is definitely that character that feels lost when other people have found their way. And that's very identifiable, not just with young people, but with folks around my age. And probably your age, too, if you're, or, you know, watching this like I am. Or should I say, if you're running the age that I am as well. So... It makes sense. It is a thing that's very, very uh, identifiable. Common ground. I like that. Good good job in those regards. Which is why I don't really... I, I don't want to say I jest when it comes to befriending the Pokemon thing. I do want to see them battle a Pokemon. Like, remember. Remember, everybody. Ash's third Pokemon, Pidgeot. Sorry, Pidgeotto. He had to battle it. And then Pidgeotto's like, all right, cool. You, you and I, we're tight. Hopefully you come back for me. He did. So I think this is, I don't want to call it one of the better episodes. It's one of those episodes where it keeps you intrigued by seeing the journey of the trainer, not just the Pokemon. So it's not just, oh man, uh, ex protagonist, got to get this thing to trust us. It's like, no, I want to understand it. Not just earn its trust, but I want to understand why it feels the way it feels. And she did. Good job for you, Liko. Hopefully, hopefully Roy gets something instead of always polishing his ancient Pokeball. So hopefully, maybe not next episode, episode after next, we get a little bit, a little bit of Roy in there. Let me know what you think. I'm going to give this episode a four out of five. It's good. It's, 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 it's decent. Basically, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, 
granted, I am a person that likes battles and stuff like that, but this this was enjoyable. Just a nice little bonding without the use of fisticuffs. So four out of five for me. Let me know what you think of the episode in the comment section down below. I don't think there's anything I actually really missed here. I do like seeing all the little Pokemon. I like seeing the Galar accurate Pokemon. Very, very fun. I also like how Roy picked the direction they went. Right? So they go this way. Because they went to the they went to the right, it starts raining. So they have to run to the left so they can get into that mountain place. And that's how she found Hatena. If they would have went to that other direction before, I don't know if they would have they probably would have got to the mine and probably wouldn't have had to, you know, double back around. So things work out. Roy is our boy. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of more videos like this one. Very fun, very cute, very relatable. Please, be good, be blessed. Wash those hands, drink your water. Be good to yourself, be good to others. Either way it goes, don't be a jerk, all right? Make sure you're staying safe out there. And make sure you realize that there are people out there that care about you and would rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow. Reach out. I promise you won't regret it. And even even if the first reach out doesn't work, reach out again. Do not give up. I promise you won't regret it. My social media is in the description down below. Go ahead and follow me. Send me a message. I promise you, you know, as long as you're not a jerk, I won't be a jerk either. And everything will work out. We can have good social media interactions. Until then, guys, can't wait to see you next week. I'll catch you later.